welcome to Savage Sounds. I'm so sorry I missed a week. Did you miss me? Did you even notice I was gone? Probably not. Uh, I was moving house and I didn't have any Wi-Fi, any Wi-Fi, uh, and I've only just got it literally yesterday. Um, so here I am. I haven't quite figured out where to do my new Savage Sounds, so I'm currently sitting on the floor with the blue sheet behind me. But it's working for now. Um, so this week I'm going to focus on something a little bit different. It's not necessarily a sound, um, but it's about performance technique. So in the UK beatbox championships, in all beatboxing championships, they have judging criteria. Uh, musicality, originality, technicality, um, and showmanship or showwomanship. So that includes stage presence and performance technique. Um, it's actually a really important aspect of beatboxing that I think people don't think about or don't think about teaching very often. Um, so a lot of beatboxers, not a lot, some beatboxers, uh, when they perform, sort of beatbox with the hood up and the microphone there and they're looking down at the ground and they could be one of the best beatboxers in the world, but the audience aren't going to know that if they're not engaging with them um, and not showcasing their skills by using their body and their personality and their energy. Uh, and it's individual for every beatboxer. I know some beatboxers who are quite stationary. Um, others, like there's a guy called Experimental who beatboxes with his hand behind his back quite a lot of the time. And then when he like does a beat that is cool, he serves up with his hand. So he'll be like, and then he put his hand back behind his back. It's quite unique, but I just think it looks cool because that's his original style. You know, you don't have to be... Some beatboxers are really, like, hands heavy all over the place. They're really energetic, and that's their thing. So don't copy other beatboxers. Find what is natural to you. Um, you'll find everyone has a beatbox hand, no matter what you do. It just does what it wants to do. I'll be beatboxing. I often do that if I'm trying to keep time. Um, like... <laughs> That just happens. I don't know why. It, it just has a mind of its own. And often if I'm doing sort of like high pitched um, or little intricate detail, I'll, my fingers start doing this. Like they're sort of showing the sound. Uh, like I'm painting the sound with my hand. If I do bass, I end up getting the bass claw. Um, so yeah, try not to think about it too much. Um, but I think it's fun for the audience to see because a lot of your mouth is covered when you're beatboxing. The, all the expression they get is from your eyes and from your hands and your body language. So I'm going to give you an example of a bad performance technique, okay? So, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the stage, Grey Savage! Ah! And then I come on stage and I look at the ground and I go... <laughs> Technically, there's nothing wrong with the beatboxing side of it, but I think I could probably move my body a little bit more to the groove. Okay, so let me try that. And Cool, yeah, that makes it a bit better. But the key thing that I'm missing is eye contact. It's how we communicate with people, it's how we get our emotions across, it's how we connect as human beings. And when you're performing, it's so important to maintain eye contact with the audience. Singers that sing with their eyes closed, oh, it's so annoying. Yeah, I get it, you're into your zone and you're get, finding the emotion, but you've completely alienated your audience. So you don't have to stare them out and be weird about it, but connect with your audience, see who's there. Um, I think it's a good thing to do. So, a bit more movement, a bit of eye contact. How about now? If I go one, two, three, four. <laughs> Wasn't sure what sound to do at the end there. Um, yeah, so that's my two pence, my tuppence, my, that is not my tuppence. That is my, my, I think it's two pence is a saying. My advice, that is my advice, what I'm trying to say, on beatboxing performance technique. If you've got anything else to say about it in the comments, then let me know. Any tips and tricks that you do, if you've had any issues with confidence or getting up on stage, dry mouth, what do you do when you've got dry mouth? I know a lot of beatboxers eat bananas before they go on stage. 
I was told that bananas dehydrate you, so I was always told to avoid them. But I know Kimmy Beatbox likes a banana before she goes on stage to keep your mouth lubricated. Um, beatboxing with cold lips is not a good thing, so you need to make sure you're warmed up. In fact, that's what I'm going to do next week. Uh, or maybe a couple of weeks after. I'm going to do warm-ups, warm-up techniques for beatboxers. Because... I don't know, do you guys warm up when you're beatboxing? Let me know. Um, gosh, this was a long one. I'll see you next week for Savage Sounds Week 20 summer or nothing, 28 or 29. Lots of love. I hope you're keeping safe. We've just gone into lockdown number two. Um, and it's a bit crap. But it does mean I'll have more time to be on the internet doing Savage Sounds. Okay, bye-bye.